Hello, my name is Julian Holloway. I'm an assistant professor in chemical engineering at Arizona State University and the fall program chair of the Women's Initiative Committee. Today I'm interviewing the featured speaker for this year's Women's Initiative Committee luncheon, Rachel Siegelman. Rachel is the chair and EN Kramer professor of the Department of Chemical Engineering at the University of California, Santa Barbara. Rachel, thank you for being with me. Uh, it's great to have you. Your talk today titled Planning Serendipity and Optimizing Notes from a Career in Progress was incredibly inspiring and I have a couple of questions for you. Um, a key theme in your presentation was seizing opportunities. How do you go about doing this in practice? So in reality, seizing opportunity is a lot about convincing yourself to be fearless. It's not that we don't always, we don't each feel fear failure or get intimidated, but um, convincing yourself that that's going to be okay and doing it anyway and just jumping in. Mm -hmm. um, so the example I gave in my talk was um, that I had met Peter Green, who's now Deputy Director at NREL, when he was at Sandia, and I was a high school student, a high school intern. And midway through undergraduate at the University of Texas, he joined the faculty there. And I walked up to him, I think after class, and said, hi, do you remember me? <laughs> and volunteered myself and to work in his lab. And um, I don't know if he remembered me or not, and I remember having kind of set myself up to do it, but it was one of the better decisions I've ever made. And it was a great research experience. He is still one of my mentors, and it was really about just seizing that opportunity and not allowing myself to talk myself out of it. Right, great. And I guess along those lines, um, about finding mentors um, and mentors that speak to you, what is your advice beyond this one story mm -hmm. on finding and maintaining these relationships with your mentors? So there are a lot of different kind of mentors. Um, I've always said that as you're choosing a graduate advisor in graduate school, a lot of it is about stylistic matchup, mm -hmm. right? I have a way of advising that works really well for me. It doesn't work for all students, and the trick for me is making sure it, the students who join my group are the ones who it will work for. Mm -hmm. And similarly, as a student, you have to really look for the advisor um, who gives you what you need. And in my case, that was someone who was really willing to spend a lot of time talking scientific strategy um, with me and talking about papers. I didn't need as much help on the day-to-day. -day. I didn't want it. I wanted a lot of room to explore, mm -hmm. but that's not for everybody. Um, that's at the advisor level. I'm a big fan of, in addition to your advisor, at all stages of your career, you need advice from a lot of different perspectives. And not everybody will be able to give you all of the advice you need. And so I'm a, I'm a big believer that lots of people have different kernels. And so you identify the person who you love to talk science with. You identify the person who's really good at giving you kind of the history and the context of things. Mm -hmm. And someone else who's really good for telling you about something far out and high risk. Um, and you assemble all of these into getting all the advice you need. And some redundancy, so you get different <laughs> perspectives. But it's important, and that's another part where you kind of have to swallow your fears and jump in, is to approach people and ask them things. Um, whether they're your neighbor or someone at a distant institution. Great answer. Um, so my favorite part about your presentation was your unwavering optimism, and how do you maintain this optimism um, when you have challenges? I don't think there's anything wrong with um, acknowledging disappointment, right? We all have setbacks. The experiment that we're really excited about that didn't work, the grant we thought was really great that didn't get funded, um, the reviewer who really didn't understand what it was we were trying to say. Um, and it's important to acknowledge that we all have that. I feel like in the Facebook generation, we sometimes fail to acknowledge that everybody has disappointments. But the other part is moving on from them. Um, be disappointed, but realize that you're spending energy being disappointed. It's a healthy thing to do for a short period of time. But then that energy has to be redirected to what is the next thing. And that's really where optimism comes in for me, is really trying to push past, give myself a time limit. I'm gonna be disappointed about this today. And then tomorrow, I'm going to move on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. And being really busy helps with that a lot, too. Yeah. Well, thank you. That's great advice. Um, and thank you for answering my questions today. And thank you for having me.